Hello everyone, today we're going to start taking a look at a couple different performance tools for Rails. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Rails Performance Gem. This is a pretty neat, it gives you a little dashboard that you can use to look at how many requests you're serving, what the average response time is, as well as tracking some logic in your application using a little uh, wrapper that you can put around it just to see like how long specific pieces of your app are taking to run. We have a feature overview here, that's pretty neat, but we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the uh, installation section. It's pretty simple, uh, but I always like to point this out. So it does get covered here. Uh, it's it's just adding the gem and running one little installer. Uh, I do have a video project already open. I forgot to open up the VS code for it though. Uh, but this is gonna be a blank and empty project here, hopefully, uh, that has nothing in it as far as I'm aware. So what we're gonna do is start by just generating a quick little scaffold. I'm gonna say Rails G scaffold. We'll create a, uh, let's create some articles with a title and a body of type text. Go ahead and do that. Now we're gonna hit Control L and F11 to clear that. We can now come over to our DB and our seeds. And I'm just gonna say uh, seed the uh, DB with uh, 50 articles. Go ahead and do this and it'll probably use faker for this. So let's come over to our gem file and let's add this gem for the uh, Rails performance. So we can just go ahead and copy this, paste this in. And then we're also going to do a gem for faker just because it's going to allow us to create some fake titles and bodies. It's really not necessary. It's just something to test with. I'm gonna go ahead and do a bundle command. This will install both of those gems. And then after that's done, we can do a Rails db colon seed command after I migrate because I forgot to migrate. So let's do a Rails db colon migrate. And then we can go up to and run this. It'll hopefully work. Uh, it doesn't look like it did uh, because it's trying to do a content instead of a body. It's GitHub Copilot trying its best, which doesn't always work right, but that's okay. So there we go. Uh, we now have a basic app here. Let's go ahead and let's try to install the Rails performance. We can do that by running Rails G Rails underscore performance colon install. Pretty simple command. Let me go ahead and make sure you can read that. We'll run that. That creates our initializer here. Now uh, in our initializer, uh, there is an option to, uh, if we come into initializers and Rails performance, I can scroll up here so you can see it does cover in the readme, uh, but there is an option to password protect it. What we can do here is we can turn this to true and then you can change your username and your password for this. Alternatively, they do have a section in the readme for, uh, where is it? It should be for the user authentication. So I've covered this before, but we're gonna do it again here. If we come over to our config and our routes.rb, in here we have like the, uh, you know, the regular routes and we've done this before where you can uh, make sure that your device users, for example, let's say they have a uh, like user enum for their roles or you have some way to check if a user is an admin. You can do that check in here and then wrap the mount path for the Rails performance. So this will take you to like localhost port 3000 slash Rails slash performance is where you'd have to go here. Uh, and then you can make sure that like this is an admin only route because it's inside of this, this section here, right? So we can do something like that. Now, I don't have device here, so I can't use this, but of course this is something that would be available to you if you had this uh, user.admin set up for you, right? So let's go ahead, now that we have this, and come back over to the config. So we have the option to HTTP protect. So what I'm gonna do is change this. I'm gonna make my username Dean, and I'm gonna make my password password. We'll go ahead and save that. Uh, now there's a couple additional things here if you need to check like additional user permissions uh, and there's some other options for you to configure as well um, as well as like what your what your home redirects you to so maybe you have like a dashboard page that you want to go back to if you visit this or maybe like the admin path right so if you like want to redirect your home will take you to slash admin right but in this case I'm just going to go ahead because we've uh, set up the scaffold and everything else I'm going to come over to localhost port 3000 and then I'm gonna go over to, I think we did uh, slash articles, right? Over here, there we go. Okay, so you can see here, uh, we have a bunch of different test articles here. We can see that this loaded in like what, two, 256 milliseconds. So let's come over to localhost port 3000 slash rails slash performance. I'll go ahead and I'll refresh and it's gonna prompt me for a username and a password. If I click cancel, it'll tell me access is denied. If I refresh, uh, it'll prompt me again. 
if you have the route set up here, you can just make sure that if you can't visit the, the URL, it'll just give you like a 404 so that any sort of bad actors wouldn't even know this existed if that was something you're interested in. Now, of course, I changed this to be Dean and password, so that should hopefully work. Now we can go ahead and full screen this. So we can see here we have uh, a couple different options running here. If I come over here and I refresh, we should hopefully see uh, a another request here. So some of this is going to be holdover from uh, something else that I was running, uh, but you get the idea. The time is going to be a little bit off just because uh, I don't have my time zone set up in the application. Uh, but in real time, if you're sitting here and you're like mashing the refresh button over and over and over again, you'll hopefully see uh, that it does spike up quite a bit. So you can come down here, you can see what the average response time is. Usually your first response time is gonna be pretty high where you take that initial hit. And then after you have everything uh, up and running, that's gonna drop down quite a bit. So you do wanna make sure that your initial like page hit isn't too high because a good example of this is like a worse website like my own runs on WordPress. You'll see here, it does take like three or four seconds sometimes for this to get up and running, which is a product of like the server I'm running, but it's also not great to just have that overall. Uh, it's just a you know consequence of, of whatever your budget can afford, but also what your software can do. Uh, so if we come over to like our request analysis, we can see that we have the posts here from the uh, other demo that I was running. Uh, and we have the articles right here, which is what we just tested. We can see that the average duration was 45 milliseconds, uh, how long the views took and what the slowest duration was. If we click on this, we can actually inspect it a bit more. We can see here every time that this page was hit, and what the requests were doing at the time and what the status of those requests was. You can then uh, you know, open one of these up, uh, download it, whatever, uh, and you know, great for presentations if, if you wanna do that. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, if we come over here and we close this, if I click the right thing, uh, you can check out any sort of errors that you're getting. So you can see here, I got an undefined method for a calculate stats. So if I come over to our, uh, our side panel here, go up to app, controllers and our articles controller. I'll come into the index and I'll do like a article dot, I don't know, uh, apples. That doesn't exist. So if I come over to our index page and I refresh, that's gonna give me an error. Now, if I come over here and I full screen this again and I refresh, you'll see articles controller index action. We have a no method error for this apples. So that's just a really convenient way to track this and see sort of what's, what's breaking for you. The other thing we can do is if we get rid of this and we come back over to the GitHub page here, we should be able to control F for uh, Rails performance measure. And if I come down here, we can see an example. So let's say that we have a method here where we do like a article dot all dot uh, order by created at DESC. And let's say for some reason this is taking, you know, just a, a really long time and we want to sort of like benchmark what the average time is here. So what we can do is we can wrap this in a Rails performance dot measure. We can say uh, uh, the uh, all articles in order, and we can do a comma, and then it's wherever this, like what this namespace is, right? So in our case, this is going to be just in quotes. We can do like a post controller, and a index action. Actually, this is gonna be an articles, articles controller and a index action. And after this, we just do a do block. We come down here, we do an end block. We can wrap this, tap it over, save it. And don't know why my formatter is not working today. Uh, and then we come over to our Rails performance again. Uh, if I refresh, we can come over here. And if we uh, come over to the custom events, we can now see our all articles in order. We can see how long this is taking us. So you can see here when I ran a collection of uh, collect posts, that was only taking about 0 0.9 MS. This one's taking 3.1. Uh, and if I come over here and I refresh a couple more times to give it some more sample size, and we can come over to our custom events, we can see this is going pretty quickly still. So that's just another example of, of something you can set up here. We also have like all of the recent requests we've had where we can see sort of an overall status of what's happening. We did get one error right here. It might be something that we would want to take a look at. If we click, uh, I should probably point this out better. If we click on the little icon right here, we can sort of take a look at all of the information associated with this, what the format of the request was, the status, when it was requested, and then sort of your, your trace right here of everything that was rendered. Uh, but yeah, this is sort of, uh, I mean, it's pretty interesting. You also have like your, your rake test here if you wanted to track these as well. Uh, but it is interesting if you click the home button, take you back to your route, uh, to have something that is this easy to set up uh, that sort of allows you to give a pretty good overview of your application uh, as you're like browsing it 
and you know checking out all of the different pages here like if we come over to our uh, request analysis here we can see that we're taking a look at like the articles controller we've gone to the edit page once the edit page took a big initial hit uh, but of course if we refresh it the edit page is going to probably average down over time you can see here the duration here was 126 uh, with the uh, slowest duration being 246. So, uh, you know, it's definitely worth taking a look at if you need a pretty easy to set up a solution for just some overview of your application. It's a lot better, in my opinion, than like having maybe you have like a, you know, thousand monthly visitors or whatever on your on your website. Uh, it's better than paying for like a $30 a month license. It's probably not necessary. So in this case, I definitely think this is this is good. There's also a Patreon link if you'd like to support them. Highly recommend doing that if you're getting any sort of value out of this because it is a free tool and it is nice to do that. But that's going to do it for me. Hopefully you found this uh, informative and helpful, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. And I'll have the Patreon link in the video description as well.